So hi, my name is Brian Proffitt. I am a manager of the Community Insights team within the Open Source Program Office. And what part of what our team does is gather metrics and data um, to try to figure out how healthy communities um, are um, and, and, and make sure that they are growing and thriving the way open source projects should. And one of the people that I work with on my team, an amazing talent, is Callie Dolphy, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, all. My name is Callie Dolphy, and I'm a data science intern here at Red Hat, and I've been here for, you know, about a year. And a lot of the things that you're going to be seeing today has been my work over the past um, six months that Brian Prophet and I have been doing. And with that, I am also finishing up my degree at Boston University in computer science. Okay, great. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. And, and the first question that we always ask ourselves here is how to discover community health and sustainability. Um, this is something that's really important. Um, as I mentioned before, making sure communities are healthy and growing is a big part of what we do at our, our job um, at the Open Source Program Office at Red Hat. Um, but we're also very interested more and more lately in the sustainability aspect of a, a given project because as more and more businesses and organizations get involved in open source, they really want to know, you know, how strong and how healthy a, a community will be um, if they're going to invest time and money and resources into that given project. So next slide, please, Kelly. Okay, so historically, this has always been done kind of by the seat of our collective pain. Um, we, we've always, you know, tried to figure out community health around things that were fairly innocuous and seemed very obvious, such as, you know, how popular is a, a given open source project? Um, how many people are using that project? What, how many downloads are coming in um, for that free software project? Um, because, you know, if you look at it from there, obviously those seem like really good, strong signs of community strength and health. Um, as platforms like GitLab and GitHub came into being and you could start looking at the first level activity of a given project on those platforms, um, you might assign things uh, about popularity and strength from stars, um, such as what GitHub has. And there's nothing really wrong with any of those metrics. The problem is this. They don't necessarily give you a true signal of what the community's health is. Things like popularity and downloads and the number of stars are great and they look awesome when you're trying to market your project and tell people how you know wonderful it is. And it may very well be true indicators of how wonderful your project is. But think about this. Suppose you have a project that has a bazillion downloads and there's no indication from the user consumption side that currently in that project, there might be some kind of infighting going on and there's been a massive battle going on on the project mailing list for months and the project is about to fork and there it will then lead to, you know, a degradation of the quality of the software that's coming out from that project. Nobody on the user side will know because, you know, it's just still being downloaded. So, it's not that downloads and stars and popularity in general are a bad thing, but we have found that over time, they are not really, you know, solid true indicators of how healthy a community can be. Next slide, please. So what we're doing in the open source program office, specifically on the community um, insights team, is we're, we're trying to do um, something and move beyond those gut feelings. We're trying to deploy analytical rigor. Um, and that we've been able to do that 
to the rise of two key movements within the broader open source ecosystem. One is the standardization of metrics. Um, and we'll talk about each of these in just a second. And the other is alongside of that uh, standardization and how we can look at all these different kinds of community projects um, in the same way is the evolution of tools. Um, and that is, again, something we're going to be talking about um, as we move through this. So next slide, please. So right now, the, the tools are this, and these are all coming around that standardization of metrics that I referred to earlier. Um, and that is actually coming from a project independent of Red Hat called Project Chaos. Project Chaos is a Linux Foundation sponsored project that is very keen on getting together metrics that can apply to any project. Because in the past, a lot of the pushback has been that we have just had metrics that um, you can't really apply you know, something to a project about databases versus an academic pro project um, or you know, something different. But that turns out not to be the case. All projects, no matter how they are constructed or what they are producing, have similar aspects which can be measured. And to measure that, we, are, we're, we currently at Red Hat and in the OSPO office are using um, three sets of tools. Um, one is known as Cauldron. Cauldron is an open source project that is based on Grafana and Elasticsearch and tools coming in and Gridmore Labs. And these are all tools that are put together by a, a wonderful vendor um, in, in the open source community known as Paturgia. Paturgia has put together Cauldron as a, um, a hosted service. You can go to cauldron.io now and you know, start running your own metrics against projects um, that are out in the open source world, um, whether they're hosted on GitHub or GitLab. And what Pro Cauldron does is gives us a very quick analytical and graphical snapshot of what um, a Git hosted project is looking like. What are the activity levels? Um, how many developers are there now? How many developers were there last year? <clears throat> um, how fast are pull requests being looked at for the first time? How fast are those pull requests and issues getting closed? Um, these are all things that Cauldron can do. In fact, we liked it so much, we actually have stood up our own instance of Cauldron um, so that we can run our uh, research projects that much faster. Um, alongside of that, we are um, working with um, members of Project Chaos on another tool that does a lot of deep diving into data sets called Augur. And what Augur does, um, it doesn't give us a graphical picture of what a community is looking like, um, but it does give us really solid connected um, pieces of data that show us how different contributors are working within different projects, what those connections are, how projects interrelate to each other, which is amazing when you're trying to like look at an entire ecosystem. So you can see very quickly with Augur, you know, not just the strength of that project, but what you're really seeing is how it connects to all the other projects that are related to it, um, which is an amazing set of insights. And then beyond that, we take the information from these two tools, and then what we're doing is we build something known as community report cards. And these report cards or analytical reports basically give us um, the graphical and um, the analytical um, tools to um, define how a community is doing. So we can run these at any time, we are working to make them um, as automated as we possibly can so that somebody can run the, the report, look at the data, draw conclusions from the data based on what they know about the project and how historically it's been, give that information back to the, um, the community itself, and they can work on 
you know, identifying those things that might be problems and need to be solved. Um, so a combination of these, these three tools are what we're using now. And I'm gonna give it over to Callie now and let her talk about some of the other things that we're doing within our team. Yeah, so now looking at this next phase of tools, we're trying to look at and see how can we use the information that we are comfortable with and have gotten very experienced with and find new perspectives with the new options that we have going on to our table. And this goes into like the next level analysis of what business needs to, need to know about open source communities before they get heavily involved. Like it is no secret that businesses these days are having a growing interest in open source communities. But a lot of these, these people have a lack of understanding of like the little nuances in the open source world. Like you can measure health and like that's one portion of, of it, but it's a different, a completely different thing to figure out how that fits into your business in a way that is sustainable. Is the community sustainable and it is something that is compatible for you? Coming from somebody who is relatively new to like the world of open source, I've always been asking the question like, what should I be paying attention to whenever we start looking at new angles of the open source communities? And like, where does it go from when you're trying to look from looking at intuitions of people of the past and trying to take that knowledge and make it data driven? And this goes into our new tool that we have we have created with a partnership with IBM Research. And this goes into three parts. The first one is the IBM Watson Discovery. This looks at GitHub at a completely new way of using um, AI-powered um, natural language processing. And we can start to understand the industry's language um, where it's uniquely looking at how open source um, keywords and different things along those lines. And this is a way that we can start grouping together repositories, not by certain metrics or whether these contributors all look at, it, look at it and work on it together, but seeing if they're using similar languages. Are they talking about similar things within their readmes? And so that brings a whole new way to group together repos and start to see new trends that are happening across all of GitHub. The next stage of this is Project Debater, which is one of the ones I'm really excited about. Um, Project Debater takes in a set of data where you can find arguments for or against a certain position. For example, you could type in, is OpenShift the best container platform? And you can see the arguments that are going through it and see the weight, whether on the positive or negative side, and see what people are saying about it. And start to figure out, okay, where are the different weight places that we need, um, whether it's if you're looking at it from a point of view, of like what do I need to do to take a one step up? Or is this something that I want to become involved in if you're kind of looking at it from an outsider point of view? Then from here, we can start to use the experimental method. This is whenever we start to use multiple different sorts of um, searches with a few of our different tools to see what the impacts are of the work that you're doing. What is the impact of the different events that we're having, the discussions like the one we're having around here around different search targets? And when we're bringing all this together, you're starting to see open source communities in a new light and start to get a little bit of a one step ahead of, the, of everyone else in the community. And I'm so, gonna pass it. Yeah, no, thank you. And so taking the, the new tools that Callie just outlined, um, we're really, this, we're, we're going to take all of the things that we mentioned, the, the, the tools that I was talking about, and, and, and also, you know, the new tools that we're working with IBM to create around Mode and Debater and Watson. And, and now we're gonna start looking at things that we've never been able to really do before. And one of those, um, those aspects is going to be uh, the, the business as impact of um, a given community. In the past, um, usually measuring the return on investment for a community has been rather difficult um, because you know you have to have a community and be a part of an open source project and, and put some time and effort into that. But what is the business getting? Um, you can say, well, we're getting um, a commercial product that we're selling and we're you know making money off of that. And that is certainly true. However, um, you know, there are more things, you know, 
there are more aspects that you can kind of pull out uh, when you look at all the different uh, elements of working with a community. And this is what our tool set is trying to do. We're going to be looking at things like um, if um, a given organization is really interested about raising a certain conversation within the broader open source ecosystem. With the, the, the mode tools that Callie described earlier, we can actually look at conversations that are going on in um, get get based um, issue you know comments and issue trackers um, within mailing list any any place that there are public conversations that are going on we can quickly look for the terms and the conversation that we're really wanting to see if we're getting raised so hypothetically if a company were trying to really um, talk up container space and, and Kubernetes-based tools are like what we see around the OpenShift uh, ecosystem. You could start looking to see if those conversations were happening, are they positive conversations? If they're not positive conversations, maybe there's something going on. Maybe there's a project, go a problem going on with your tool set that you weren't aware of before. And we can start dialing in and figuring out what those conversations are about. Um, and then also, too, um, we can um, look at um, things like how the resources can be calibrated towards community health. If we see a problem within a given open source project, we can quickly ascertain, you know, what skill sets, what resources in terms of infrastructure, um, anything like that, what needs to be placed, put in place to help that community solve it, the problem that it's having. Next slide, please. Another thing that these tools are gonna to be able to help us do is get into that element of uh, sustainability because now with all of these tools that are disposable, we can really measure risk um, at many different levels. We, we can still measure the internal project health, which is what we've been doing for quite some time with Cauldron and Augur, but especially with Cauldron. Um, but now with Augur and Mode, we can look at how that community um, is interacting with the broader open source ecosystem. And we can really get numbers and figure out exactly how important a given project is to its peers. And again, it's not a popularity contest. We're really trying to define very quantitatively, you know, the strength of a project and also how important it is. We we don't, none of us who are watching this want to see another open SSH where you have a project that is maintained by a very small number of people and yet so many projects rely on it. And if those people are no longer able or willing to maintain that project, then there becomes a very large problem in the broader open source ecosystem. And, and the other thing that we're doing here is we're trying to um, detect these risk factors as early as we possibly can. Because the earlier we can figure out that there's going to be some kind of risk to sustainability, for a given project, the faster that all the businesses involved with that project can make a business decision and rescue it. So you're not in constant firefighter mode. You're actually planning ahead and making business decisions based on project risk um, as early as possible. And, and Callie, tell us a little bit more about the other things that we wanna try to do. Absolutely. The next stage of this is looking at strategic investment, kind of taking that one step ahead. By putting together the different tools that we have here, we can start looking at new companies, new um, communities that are bolstered by these contributor and project data, starting to see what are the anomalies, what are new players that are coming into the field that we have necessarily not paid attention to before. And this can go from just being a community to being a buzzword, like we can start looking at what is gonna be the next containers. And if we start to see buzz in different 
um, talk, whether it be on GitHub and GitHub activity, whether it be at um, different um, events, we can start to see, okay, how is this activity comparing to the prior large exploding, exploding buzzwords in the past? And start to see, are there similarities between the two? And if it's something that we should try to get on early on. And then once we start to see these certain words come out, we can start tracking their trends and looking at their GitHub um, data and seeing what the issues and discussions are around it. What are people saying about it? We can look at that from Project Debater and seeing over time, is it going up or is it going down and kind of taking that one step ahead look to see where we can become involved in. And from here, we'll be going a little bit into a demo of these different projects and how they kind of connect together. And so first, we're going to be doing a walkthrough with the mode debater tool. If there's any chance that y'all can't see my screen, please just let me know. But right here we have a demo um, of the mode tool on just the discovery side. And the terms that are getting used to bring all the data into this is we're looking specifically at Red Hat, Fedora, and CentOS Stream. And we can change what those um, key terms are if we start to say, okay, we want to look just in general, just at containers. But right now for this tutorial, that's the terms that we're going to be looking at and what is taken into the large set of data that's going into this. And so one thing that I've really picked up on is that you can start e examining the impacts of events with changes of GitHub activity around that date. One example of this is the DevCon CZ that usually occurs around January. We can see that in 2019, um, looking at right after the event, we can see that there is a bolster in the amount of projects created and even more around that time leading up to the event and after the event, the, the amount of commits per week are up on a large upwards trajectory, which I think is a huge thing to look into here because projects being created, that's that has one portion of it, but if there's more activity around the different projects that have already had a ground and state, we start to think, okay, what was being talked about during this event that's making this activity going go up? Is there something new or is there something that's starting to, that's been on the stage a little bit, but really is taking off because of the talks that are occurring at this event? And so that's when you can start to get into a little bit more analysis and start seeing, okay, what, where is the why? And then from here, we can also looking, look at the growing technologies and buzzwords. So say in a hypothetical, this um, event was really big, talking early on about containers. We can start looking at a subset of this data. And so for here, we're going to do the example of containers and start looking at, okay, what is in this set that has to do specifically with containers? And so we can see right here how the um, different data changes over time and that the subset of data that is to do with containers almost has more of a peak than even the large overall set. And so you can start to think maybe this has a large impact in it. And so that starts sending you down the rabbit hole, which is just not necessarily, which really starts to bring in new ideas. You can start looking into who are the contributors companies that are being involved in this? Obviously, a lot of these are more Red Hat centric because right now we're looking at terms that are focused in specifically on Red Hat. But overall, we can start looking at the, com the top contributors as well. Who are the big players here? And also we can start to see, okay, what is their activity? Are they going and branching out onto some new projects as well? It just really has this branching effect that starts to give way more ideas of what's going on in our communities. And then from here, Say we got some thing that was starting to spark our interest. This is when I really think Cauldron starts to come into play. So here you have a project that takes in a community's um, repo data. And so from here, maybe I was thinking to myself that I want to learn a little bit more about what companies are involved in this project. We can go to our visualization tool here and create a new visualization to start to see what is actually happening here. Whenever I'm starting to look at um, which companies are coming at play, I personally go for the like pie option because you can kind of see, okay, how what are the percentages? And it's a lot more visually appealing for me, but there are so many different options here that go upon. I really like to use 
the goal tool um, to start to see how is the activity around the commits, how quick is it happening, is it reaching the goals or some type of threshold that I have found for um, found for this um, community. And so, like I said, there's just so many different um, options here whenever it comes to visualizations. But right for this example, um, we're going to be going on to the um, Pi tool, and we're going to be using the source um, their Git data to create this. And so here we just have, you know, just a random circle. So we now start to look at, okay, what is the aggregation we want to use? And from here, we're going to want to take a unique count of author IDs. And because there's a lot of times you'll see, obviously people will commit multiple times on different, um, on different repos. And so you want to make sure you're uniquely counting each time a new one comes to play. So I'm just going to get a, little label going for this which is the unique ids and so here we're going to start looking at the buckets which is what are the sections that we're going to want to want to look at and so we'll go into split slices and our aggregation here is going to be in terms looking at the different terms that are going into the field and from there we're going to be looking at author domain right there and so this is looking at their um, email URL, which is not a perfect metric, but it can really just get you starting to look at an idea. And I feel like that's like the biggest like portion that I'm getting out of all these tools is that they're not something where you just look at them and poof, they give you all the answers. They give you a new way to think about things and start to get more data behind like the intuitions that you have, or maybe telling you that the intuition that you had isn't necessarily always accurate. And so we're going to make the size of these buckets around 10 just for making it a little bit more visually appealing and we're going to group whenever you have like a bunch of emails that are random that are not that there's not like a large enough there's not at least 10 of them they're going to be grouped into an other category and we're going to update and then look what we have here we can start to go and click and see okay what are the ones that are actively involved in this specifically community? Gmail is a pretty common one, which doesn't tell us too much, but we can see here that Red Hat is actively involved in it, and there's a lot of others. And then there's also these other ones that are in the corner, Seuss.com. I have personally never heard of it, backtick.net. There's different smaller players on this field that you must necessarily wouldn't learn about. In different communities, you might have more of your major players on hand. but those are the two main tutorials that we have to show today to kind of give an idea of what these tools do and how they could be working, um, how they could work together. And from there, um, open the table for some questions and see if there's any other um, things that you'd like to maybe analyze with our tools that we have available. Definitely would be open to looking at some different keywords using project mode. Um, cauldron sometimes takes a little bit longer to do some specific searches, but if it's something quick, we can definitely make that happen. Well, this this is awesome, Callie. I really love seeing you guys using this and for the health and sustainability of communities, it's really key. Uh, and a lot of this, uh, the, the tooling here that you're showing, um, especially the pie chart and that, that is, is something that we've been using in the OpenShift community for quite some time. Um, and one of the things um, that I always say about um, and try and preach, I, I think I'm very preachy about it, um, Brian might agree with that, uh, is that, that community management and community development, um, we kind of think of it as an art, but this is bringing um, and trying to bring to bear some of the data-driven approaches that we use in our sales and marketing and everything else, why shouldn't community and open source communities have access to this to do the same sort of stuff? So it's wonderful to see you guys using all of this. The other thing that I always, and, and I love seeing in this, in this demo was, um, I'm up in Canada. Um, I used to be in Massachusetts right near you in Beverly and, 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 and a shout out to UMass and I know you're at BU, so we had a little competition going there. Um, but uh, is this hockey puck concept about looking for um, new emerging technologies. And one of the things that we've been doing um, quite extensively is watching the migration of resources and, and even our end users from different projects. So, um, and using these same tools and the Batergia tools and the network analysis ones, I think if anyone knows me, they've seen me throw up a, what I call the jellyfish diagram because it's always pink and many tentacles of, of watching how people collaborate across communities and 
and these tools have been you know available for us for a while but what what is really interesting to me is the use of the Watson and the AI stuff to do maybe some predictive things to do more than just watch what I call the, the migratory processes. So um, yeah, I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about how the Watson part plays into this, if, if you can explain, because that was slightly different than the pie charts and dividing out. Those are tools that, that I've had, but the Watson, the mode stuff um, is really cool. Um, and 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 how that and how you're working together with IBM is if you could talk a little bit more about that that would be wonderful yeah so this project kind of evolved a little bit um, over the past probably six to eight months and it started out with IBM reaching out to us just wanting a little bit more of a perspective a community perspective that they knew they're like we are big on the research side. We've done a lot of this analysis from the standpoint of academic papers, but we understand that that's not how and where we're gonna find the useful data to understand the open source ecosystem. And so we brought in more of the community and open source perspective to start to see, okay, what should be the main things to look at whenever it comes to analyzing GitHub. And so whenever we, we can actually go and look back at the, um, visualization here. So with this um, project mode tool, all of these terms are being grouped together by using sentiment analysis mainly on the readmes. They're also doing a little bit of metrics on like community metrics on the amount of these repos that have community guidelines, which is something that's also very interesting to look at. But it's taking the strength of um, Watson um, like debater discovery to group people to get a um, group um, repos together using sentiment analysis, not necessarily grouping people together because of the transfer of um, similar contributors. And so you can't go and just look at the entirety of GitHub whenever you're looking at this um, like mode tool, whenever you're looking at this page, but you can say, okay, I want this specific subset. So for right now, for this demo, the subset of terms that we're looking at is anything that has to do with um, Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS Stream. Maybe we wanted to look at containers. Maybe we wanted to look at hybrid cloud. Maybe we wanted to look at some, like just looking at um, like Google, seeing it, like what is going on that's just specifically doing, going on with a, a direct com competitor VMware. And so yeah. you can go and look at the repos and group them together in a completely different way and how you want to do that has there's a lot of flexibility that comes once you bring in that sentiment analysis portion and start looking at the key terms so if, if i hear you right this mode tool is looking at readmes and um, contributor guidelines is it looking at um like the mailing lists um what are the data sets is it is it mining the slack the you know you know, the blogosphere, Stack Overflow, or any of that kind of content, or is this strictly the readmes and and? Um, so right now it's just the readmes, but the mailing list specifically is something that we brought up and have talked about really integrating in, especially with the Watson um, debater. We don't have access to an inter an interface to show today, sadly, but we can take in the re the um, mailing list data, which is actually something that I worked on like cleaning and preparing data for a different project that I was working on during my internship. And so we've talked about pretty heavily taking the tools that we already have for preparing the um, mailing list data and putting it into tools like this. For this demo, we aren't looking at that, but it is very, it is, we can make that happen pretty easily. This um, setup can be applied to a, a way wider scope than just readmes. This is just where we, this is the starting point. Yeah, now this this is great because, uh, like like I said, what we've been doing with the Petersia tools is, um, you know, we do all, we we do a wide range of things um, with it um, and be, beyond just community health. Um, but one of the things that the other things that's really important, uh, I think, to emphasize to people watching this is that um, the importance of domain knowledge. Um, it's great, and this is, happens in any data science tooling too. Is that if there isn't somebody um, with a bit of domain knowledge about the domains and how they interact, it's um, the tooling is really one of the th is lacking. So like I've worked in other spaces, finance, accounting, auditing and stuff like that. And if you didn't know what you were auditing or what, you, what is appearing, it's pretty, um, you, can, you can go down a wormhole. 
let's say, or make the wrong assumptions. So I think one of, you know, taking it step by step, doing the readmes, adding in new stuff is really the right thing to do. And, and as we um, torture you and make you learn all about open source and communities, we'll eventually add in um, hopefully all of the CNCF projects, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation ones, which is um, really where most of the projects that I work on and interact with um, live and breathe um, along with the OpenShift ecosystem too. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting this with a wider data set um, and, and that'll scare everybody over at IBM, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, getting that, getting that set up because we have a lot of that data, but not in the um, uh, semantic um, analysis or sentiment analysis stuff going on. And the, the other thing that's really, I think, important um, to understand is, you know, who are the and I think you have a little bit of that, like you can see some of the people's names who are, you know, leading up the repos, but um, is it possible here like to, to do analysis that drives um, on an individual contributor um, to a project or is this really a higher level thing? So to see where, where's Kelsey Hightower um, playing in these days or, uh, you know, what's going on, you know, in the sandbox at CNCF, there's I think there's now 45 projects in the, the CNCF sandbox um, now, and you know that's those those kinds of trends and analysis I think are are key to really understanding the entire ecosystem around some of the projects. Yeah, so so answering that question, so it's a little bit of a fine line because um, we're we're trying to. So the short answer to your question is yes, we should be able to do that between the tools we have here and also Augur, which we haven't demonstrated. You know, Augur is very good at like looking at a individual developer and seeing where that person has, you know, wherever they are in GitHub. It's not limited by subset. It just looks for all connections um, and finds out where that person is, you know, uh, working. So we can do it. Um, we're a little bit hesitant because, um, and how we apply that, because we don't want to get into privacy issues. Mm -hmm. um, we've historically, and, and you know this too, Diane, because of your work with Paturgia and, and the stuff that OSPO used to do, um, when, when we approached this as a, like a giant fire hose of information, we were always very careful to try to keep the user data as aggregated as possible. and you know, it's always been a fine line because when we look at things like the, the pie chart that Callie showed us earlier where we're trying to identify domain uh, by domain, like who's working for whom, are they working for Red Hat or Google or SUSE, um, we, we can do that, but to refine that, we, we kind of need to know a little bit more about the person. Um, because like at Red Hat, we are not all required to use our redhat.com domains when we, you know, uh, go participate in, in any open source project. So there could be more Red Hatters or, you know, and any given project yeah. beyond just the redhat.com. And, and it might be similar for other organizations too. So yes, and, and as we move forward, we're really trying to kind of, be very mindful of, of individual privacy, especially, you know, we're getting into situations with GDPR and the California equivalent. And the, now, you know, Japan has one and Brazil has one. And I just heard, I think, you know, um, uh, another state in the United States has something going. So there are a lot of individual uh, municipalities and countries that have privacy laws in place and we have to be mindful of those as well. No, definitely, and and that's really one of the the, the things that, like you were mentioning, with with the Petergia and the Sorting Hat, um, and the Cauldron projects and stuff like that, they have been very mindful of of, of making ensuring that it's um it's following those things, and and that's also um you know especially when we talk about putting some of these toolings and making them available publicly um, as open source projects, and that's really been key. But, you know, there's. I'm always, the, I'm a huge fan of this stuff, so I'm totally thrilled. I really want to have you back and demo the Augur stuff um, and uh, take some time, Kali, maybe, and look at um, where where OpenShift lands in this and when OK, OKD lands in this. And this is really um, very uh, timely 
um, as we're, you know, I, I love the emphasis early on, um, Brian, when you were talking about the um, the ROI um, from vendors who are, uh, there's there's always two sides to every open source initiative is the end users and, you know, what the value that they get out of the project and their participation, their use of your project. And then all of the vendors who are collaborating and um, the value that they get um, from participating in those open source projects. And so I think when we try and um, sometimes in our, our jobs have to justify resources being allocated to different projects, which trust me happens all the time inside of Red Hat, um, these kinds of tools um, let us really help um, with those judgment calls about where the resources are. Um, and, and as I said, I, I think the other big piece of this is um, using it to see where the hockey puck's going. You know, where, where are we shooting to? Because we are always, um, we're always in the present when we're doing this. We're always trying to suss out some, um, you know, current kerfuffle in a mailing list or something that's going on over in here because somebody's unhappy with it. And we often don't do any forward looking what's coming down the pipe. Where are our end users playing? Um, you know, there was a great example of it a while back um, with uh, a company, Amadeus, that is a, uh, using OpenShift. And they came um, to a, a vendor, uh, gave a talk on their use of Kafka, right? And it was really early, very, very early days of Kafka. But I think had we had tools like this, we probably could have seen them um, starting to log issues in Kafka, log, um, do a PR, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And so for vendors who are looking to see where their customers are playing, where their end users are playing, these kinds of tools, not just for Red Hat or IBM, but for everybody who's working in open source. Um, and it really helps us um, justify continuing to engage and, and do this. Um, and as we all know, open source is part of pretty much every company on the planet these days is using something open source, whether you're um, making candy or manufacturing rocket ships or writing software. So this is really um, part and parcel of every business organization's decision making process now. Um, yeah. And the work that chaos is doing that, um, you know, all of the different uh, inner source and other communities are doing it are really very, very important. So I can't say thank you enough, Kali and, and um, uh, Brian for for highlighting all this work, and I am so thrilled to see it being done um, and getting getting the airtime and resourcing internally at Red Hat. So, and I'm really looking forward to picking your brain, Kali, and um, running some OKD uh, stuff there. And and the other one I want to see run is, you run is operators. That term, the operator framework, because that is really good. It's tentacles and so many different things beyond containers. And this is where um, once you've got these tools refined um, and we've got some processes in place for it, getting the, the lead project engineers who are working on it, whether it's in the emerging um, tech office at Red Hat or one of the project leads for one of the CNCF projects, so that they have the domain knowledge and they can tweak and see um, this. This is really hugely helpful for um, community development efforts. So again, thank you very much for coming today and um, putting up with some of our technical issues this morning. But um, we are definitely having you back, Callie. This was great. Thank you all so much for having us. Yes, thank you. It's been it's been a pleasure. We're, we're excited about the work we're doing and um, we're looking forward to showing it off again. <laughs>